Hello everybody, it's Lou Collins. Thank you for joining me on the Craft Stash and Family blog hop. I'm really excited to do this with you this time of year. We're going to get festive with some non-festive kind of um, products from my textures range. I'm going to be making a Christmassy card. You can use lots of the different techniques that I'm going to be using, very much kind of mixed media style in here today. And you can use them for other times of year, other events, other occasions as well. Um, please do check the description below because you'll be able to find out where you go next on the hop. You should have just joined me from Sam Calcott's blog um, or YouTube channel. So that's linked there. If you haven't caught that one already, go back to the beginning. Now I am going to be giving away a £25 craft stash voucher to one of you. So what I'm asking you to do is simply like this video, comment on this video, um, and then of course subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Um, definitely do let me know in the comments that you've done all of that and then I'll be picking somebody later on. I think the same goes for everyone along the hop as well. So make sure you go along and you do like, uh, comment and subscribe to everybody's on the hop. So you're going to get lots of inspiration from us all today. As I say, go and check out where to go next at the end of this video uh, and I hope you enjoy this tutorial. So let's get started. So the main item I'm going to be using for my background is from my Wildflowers collection. This has only just recently launched, so I'm really excited to be able to show you a different way to use this. The Wildflowers collection is all about, well, wildflowers, really sort of spring, summer, maybe even autumn theme. I'm going to be bringing it into winter. So it's a large panel die. It's five by seven inches, or it goes onto a five by seven card, so it's a little bit smaller. So you can get it through your smaller machines. I've got my Big Shot here. As you can see, it's only the smaller Big Shot. It's not a Big Shot Plus. Um, and it goes through absolutely perfectly and it cuts perfectly every time as well. So I'm going to start by cutting this panel. Now I am going to be cutting it um, with slightly thinner borders. Now there is a border die included in the die set. Um, I'm going to be cutting it by hand though because that does give us quite a wide border and I want a thinner one for this. So um, a lot of this card I'm kind of making up as I go along. Uh, you'll get to see my thought process and if I make any mistakes, I'm going to leave them in the video for you so you can see how I tackle that. So first thing to do is cut myself down a piece of cardstock that's a little bit bigger than my panel, just here. I'm going to use a pale green for this. Now most of this green is going to be covered over um, because I'm going to do inking and a little bit of texture paste and things like that on there. Everything I'm using I'm going, is available from Craft Stash, um, particularly, of course, the textures dies. They'll be linked below, dies, stamps, things like that. Um, all the essential tools like the low tack tape, they're all available at Craft Stash as well. As I say, everything will be linked down below so you can find those. And of course, if you are the winner of the £25 voucher, you can go ahead and you could purchase some of these if you wanted to, to recreate this card. Now I usually keep my things nice and tidy in my craft room, but there's a little bit of paper left in that die. So just popping this into my die cutting machine between my plates. Um, it's a large a sort of panel die, so a solid die. Usually you'd think you'd need to add shims to this, um, but you absolutely don't. I tend to just go through forwards and backwards and then that cuts beautifully. The cardstock I'm using is about 230 GSM. It's a nice textured cardstock as well. I find that cuts really nicely. If you have something that's a smooth cardstock, sometimes I find it's a little bit harder to cut through um, just because of the pressure that's used in the manufacturing process to make that cardstock smooth. It actually means the fibers of the paper are kind of pressed, compacted really tightly together, and that makes it harder for a die to get through. And you know what? That border that I cut very roughly for this panel of paper is almost perfect, so I might just neaten that up with my trimmer. Um, I'm Very often I don't use a trimmer or a ruler. I do things by eye. I like the organic look of it, um, but we'll see how this looks as the card starts to build up. Um, I haven't even really chosen my card base colour yet. I'm going to see what everything looks like once it's all together. So. There, popped all those pieces out. As you can see, I've got a few little bits, just a little bit of detail. Most of it, what, this, once you start working with it, adding your ink and other mediums, pastes and colours, to be honest, a lot of these are going to start falling out anyway, so I'm not too worried about um, picking those out. I'll just get some of the larger ones. But as you see, that cuts absolutely beautifully. There we go. Okay, now I tidy up as I go along. So pop these away in my bin, which is actually really full. I need to tidy that up. So now to colouring this. So what I need to do is pop any clean cardstock out of the way, because I'm going to get a bit messy. Pop 
this is just a sheet of plastic i do have blending mats and things a lot of them at the moment need a good clean they've got pastes and things on them so i'm just going to be using um, a piece of plastic packaging as a blending mat almost so for this the first thing i want to do is make most of it kind of a, a brown color um I'm, or kind of a brown i'm going to use i think gathered twigs actually sounds perfect for christmas i'm going to put some of this distress oxide all over my piece of plastic and i'm going to spritz that with some water there we go and just fold that in half just to start separating so we don't have any strong lines in there like so and then just place the die cut into there a couple of times so put it down and lift it up and i'm going to just do that a few times turning it around picking up the ink in different areas making sure of course that the edges are done as well so you see you get that mottled look to this starting to come through that's going to look 10 times better once it's dried of course there we go so then i think i need to do the same again with a dark green i kind of want to keep the green peeking through so forest moss i think would be a good one to do this with exactly the same again just spreading that you see most of the um most of the the ink, the water was absorbed by the cardstock, so I didn't need to clean this plastic at all. There's quite a lot of green on here, but that's fine. I'm just going to repeat doing this over and over again with different colours of distress oxides until I have a lovely, almost completely filled, mottled background. Kind of lots of different colours. You'll see it more in the photo that I show you at the end of the completed card you'll be able to see the detail in this a little bit more there we go now you can do this and leave each layer wet if you like and the colors will kind of blend into each other or you can um, leave each layer to dry so I'm going to leave that one to dry you can heat dry it of course um, for this layer I didn't quite lift up all the ink so I'm going to wipe that with a bit of kitchen towel off of there I'm going to allow this to dry and then I'm going to do one more layer of the splodging. And that's just going to be with a little bit of ground espresso, which is a really dark brown. So get this ready. This won't dry, so I can have this already prepared. There we go. Spread that up um, as much as possible. And I'm just going to put my heat tool on that just to dry this off and then I'll get some lovely kind of different effects within the greens and the browns there um, they won't mix as well so you get like almost watermarks which is perfect so you can tell with cardstock when it's dried because of course it's a lot stiffer when it's damp like this it's quite floppy you can feel it's really flexible so it's quite easy to tell when it's dried mind your fingers with this because of course your fingers are going to catch some of the heat if you're holding it up otherwise put it onto a heat resistant surface and use something like a pokey tool or a pair of tweezers to hold it still there we go I think that's dry enough and i'm going to be careful at just dipping this in a little bit i'm not pressing it down and hopefully you start to see where i'm getting the slightly darker brown stippling going on in there and there we go so we're really building up lots of texture there's three different colors in there and we're going to do even more in a moment there we go so now now that's reduced to sort of just little spots on there i'm happy to just go in flat and pick that up perfect once again wipe my sheet allow that to dry off i'm hoping you can see all the different colours we've developed on there. It's going to look absolutely beautiful once it's dry. So once again, I'm going to dry this off so that it's not too delicate to work with and I'll go on to the next stage. There we go. So I've dried that. Uh, it's probably about 90% dry. I've got a couple of uh, pieces that are ever so delicate. I expect this bit really to tear off soon. It's a little branch that I must have caught when I was adding the ink and the water and it's just torn at the end there. So I'm going to be very delicate with that. But if it falls off, I can glue it back on. 
So the next bit, I want to add a little bit of um, some darker speckles. Um, I'm going to do this with, this is Dilution's Ground Coffee Ink Spray. I'm going to do it from a distance. Um, I'm going to be very careful, of course, because I'm going to cat, probably catch my background as well, rather than just the mat. Um, but I'm going to, in fact, I might actually put another piece of plastic underneath here. I've got another piece here so I can spread this a little bit more. There, and I'm just going to, from a distance, just give this a little spritz just like so, perfect. Okay, I don't want to do any more than that. Uh, I'm going to lift off the excess. Just got it a little bit over the plastic, that's fine. One of these bits of plastic can go aside and I can just clean up this one. And with this, if you spritz it with water, it's easy to clean up as well. On my wood grain background, doesn't matter too much. So that's just given me a few, a few additional speckles, more texture. Now, the next bit I want to do, I'm going to take some stencil brushes and I'm going to use, now we've actually got, I want a nice bright red. Oh, I love this one. So festive berries, perfect. Let's see how dark we can get this. Being an oxide, should be reasonably dark. I've got a nice new set, a reasonably new set of stencil brushes here. And I'm going to, oh, that's got a blue in it. That's not a new one. This one is a clean one. So I'm going to get lots and lots of the festive berries oxide in here. Because it's an oxide, it's a really opaque, um, opaque ink. So we're going to be able to layer this red, hopefully, over the top of lots of areas on here. So what I'm doing is I'm looking for shapes that are little round sort of shapes. And I'm just picking those out. So this one that I said was a little bit delicate, I'm being careful on there. I've got little clusters that look like they could be berries. So I'm kind of just aiming for those. I'm being very random with this. I'm not worried about the berries being evenly placed because I want this to be quite organic looking. There's some, there's some more up here. So just reapplying my ink to my stencil brush each time. And there's some lovely little berries there, just there, and some in the middle. A lot of this may well be covered up later on with additional embellishments that we're going to do. There we go. So starting to come together, you can actually see it better there, can't you see the reds? Now, if you want to, you can go back over, layer that red up. It's almost a pink, this colour. Really lovely, though. So I'm going to just go over layering that up a little bit so we get a deeper colour. I want it nice and bright and I might even do it more so later on once I've put my card together if I think it needs it. A little bit over here, there we go. Lovely. So once again, put things away. And I've got one more thing to do to this panel before we move on and really let this dry. So let's just wipe the pink off of there. Spritz of water will loosen it up to wipe it away and there we go the last thing I want to do well two things first of all I want to add um, the same way as we did with the brown I want to add some white distress spray stain now I'm going to spritz this again but I'm going to keep it again from a distance so I get lots of speckles rather than a nice clean solid coverage um, just spritz little bits and that's going to give us a little bit of a snowy effect I don't want too much in any one place. I'm going to dab where I got some big dollops. There we go. Pop that to the side once again. Clean up. Now I can clean this up a bit better in a moment. Let's get the excess off with the dry tissue. There's some under here. If you don't clean up as you go, you will end up with all sorts of mess. You'll end up finding that you're getting the wrong colours in the wrong places. And now lastly... I'm going to take Cosmic Shimmer Fluffy Stuff. This stuff is probably one of my most used mediums at Christmas time. I absolutely love it. And what I'm going to do now is decide which is going to be the top and the bottom of my card. So this is the top. Uh, and I'm going to put the fluffy stuff starting, first of all, on the berries. Um, just a little bit on the tops of the berries. So if you imagine there's been some snowfall. And it's just captured the red areas. And then after that... You take a look and you think, actually, I think that might need um, some more of the white in other areas as well. You can go ahead and do that on some of the leaves as well. So just little dots. Now, don't worry too much about what this looks like now. We're going to 
uh, heat this up. I think I'm going to put some, I've got a twig there. So I'm going to run it down the top of the twig as well, or the branch. Just a thin bit can be enough. Little bits on the tops of leaves. So from that one plain, I should have kept us a, an example of it, shouldn't I? I want that one plain piece of cardstock that was cut, that plain green, we've developed all this different colour and texture into it and made it really Christmassy. But you could do this with um, really any sort of season, so if you wanted to make it autumn, you could do reds and golds and yellows instead of the greens and reds. You know, it's up to you how you work a lot of your craft tools and products to make them seasonal. Color, color change is huge, it makes such a difference. There we go, um, I think that's probably about enough. That's a little bit on there, okay. Oh, I've got one more, so I just saw a big one here. Again, I think it's probably going to be covered up, but never mind. So I've added all my white stuff. Now, the big thing here is to take your time and heat this and heat it until it, the foam dries and expands and becomes fluffy. There, so my fluffy stuff has dried. Hopefully you can see the dimension. It looks like snowfall on there. Um, what I'm going to be doing is matting this onto this teal or, or duck egg blue color. So it's really going to stand out. I can put this panel aside now whilst we work with this. I really like actually um, where I, I just roughly cut that border for cutting right at the beginning. I quite like that border. I will rough it up when it's all uh, dried and cooled down. I'm going to rough up the edges of that distress it, but I'm actually going to leave them the size that they are. So I'm just going to mark, if I can just find myself a pen or a pencil, I'm just going to place that with a little border. Oops, I'll have to use the other side of this paper and just mark myself whereabouts I'd like to cut that. So taking my trimmer I'll cut that down and then we'll work at uh, putting some texture into this piece as well because it's very plain against that. There we go so we've got our panel now to start working on this one and um, adding some texture into this. Now I'm going to come back to my wildflowers collection again and I'm going to have a look we've got here uh, this wonderful stamp this is just numbers, random numbers, but I really like to use this. I'm going to actually use it in a couple of different ways. So I've got a few different inks here that can add subtle effects. I'm just looking for one more that's here. Um, it should be here, hopefully, there we go, Versa Mark. And lastly, um, let's, go, let's go with gathered twigs again because of course gathered twigs is uh, a colour that we've used there so it'll blend everything in. So I've got all sorts of different inks here. I'm going to just put this away, pop this onto a little handheld block rather than a stamping platform because this is quite a quick technique so we're going to be stamp, stamp, stamp. Um, changing it, switching it up on a platform regularly is just going to take time. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to apply Versamark which is a clear, um, usually used as a clear embossing ink and I'm applying this to my stamp. And I'm just going to start stamping. Now it's ever so, so, I don't even think you'll be able to see that, but that's fine, that's what I wanted. I want very, very subtle in the background. There we go, a little bit more. Oops, get that over. Nice and random. Now what I'm going to do with that before we do any more, it's actually put some clear embossing powder on there. So let's find my clear, I believe that is clear gloss, yeah. So just spread it all over. This isn't the most exciting part of the video because of course you can't see the ink, you can't see the clear embossing powder as it melts or anything like that, but it's there. So very randomly, I'm not looking for perfection here, I'm very randomly going to oh, get most of it in the pot. I'm hoping, let's see, there we go. You can see that hopefully. Some random pieces there. Let's heat this up, melt that. And what that's going to do is give us a little bit of texture. In fact, I'm just going to do a little bit more of Mr. Space. It's not the end of the world, but it bothers me that there's that sort of gap. So I'm just going to add a little bit of powder to there in the center there as well. Again, most likely that's going to be all covered up, but you never know. There we go, that's a bit better. Now I'm going to heat this, just heat set all that clear powder. 
there we go so if I put that to the right light somehow and let me see there we go hopefully you can see we've got the uh, glossy effect I don't know the best way you can see that but we've got the numbers glossy clear on there now when I do the next stage you should be able to leave those as a resist this is the reason I've done that. If I get a little bit carried away with adding my colours and my stamping to this part, I still want some of that teal blue to show through. So now by doing the clear embossing, embossing powder and, and stamping and everything, that's protecting some areas of that um, background, whoops, of that background there. So they're going to definitely remain um, blue, whatever I do to this. So now I'm just taking that same stamp and I'm going to stamp over the background quite randomly. There we go, use up the ink that's on there as well. So there'll be random bits of ink, perfect. Okay, now I've done this with a um, Distress Oxide. It is water reactive. So I'm going to give this a light spritz all over, just like so. And that's going to just start mottling some of those edges. Okay, and let's do a little bit more there. Now I'm going to take a clean sheet you can see it's starting to make the paper bend. I'm going to take a clean sheet of kitchen towel and lift up some of that brown, but that's mostly going to lift it up off of the um, embossing that we just did. There we go, just to make sure that that's nice and clear. Now I'm also going to add a little bit of the brown ink to my acrylic block. I have already taken the stamp off lots of that on there and I just need a paintbrush there we go and I'm going to flick some of the sound, same brown over areas in the background too there we go perfect now clean off the brush clean off the block um, I might give that a bit more of a spritz in a couple of places a little bit closer as you can see that just allows a little bit of um, bleeding and wicking and I'm going to now dry all of this off now I can't dry this too closely if I go too close with the heat gun that's going to re melt the um, the embossing powder and then it, it will just not have the effect that we wanted so I'm just drying this from a distance and allowing the, um, uh, the the ink to dry off now a couple of areas I think that's a little bit too uh, too detailed so a little bit more water in places there we go so it's kind of as I'm drying it it's working as well and you can of course use your kitchen towel also to lift up any excess which I think is going, what I'm going to do here I've put a little bit too much in a few places so lift off the excess lovely dry that off make sure that I'm not going to have any pools of anything also don't forget to dry the back because where you're drying the front the moisture is absorbed or, or evaporating from the front but the back you might still have moisture there and then when you stop drying the front eventually that will come back up to the surface because of course it spreads through the drier areas again so make sure the front and the back are dry again 90% dry will be fine to carry on working with this there we go lovely so I've got a textured background so not quite as um, not quite as play, play as it was now I'm going to come back to uh, a blending mat um, where is it there we go I'm not sure I cleaned this off last time actually now I've got a bit of brown ink on there so let's wipe this and the next bit is to take back to the gathered twigs and let's take a brown, I should have a Gathered Twigs blending brush. Got it. And I'm just going to brush around the edges of this. And that's just going to give us a kind of a vignette all the way around, leaving the blue in the center. That's just, it's going to help blend in that stamping that we've just done with the same colour as well. Just like so, a little bit more maybe up here. I like the darker edges, capture the edges a little more. 
I might actually pull in uh, another colour, the espresso, and just capture with this the very edges and particularly really the corners. I should have really changed my brush because I do have one dedicated for this colour, but I didn't. Never mind, it will wash clean if I need to. There we go. Okay, so, so far we've got a couple of backgrounds. One's going to go on top of the other. We've got that lovely teal blue coming through. It's all a bit rough and ready at the minute. It's going to look lovely when it's finished. Okay, so backgrounds can get set aside now to dry. Let's focus on something for the center. I'm thinking a tag with a robin on. Now I do have a collection and it's called the Bookshop Collection. It came out um, a couple of months ago and part of that were these lovely little um, birds that we built up. Now I've already got some of these built up. If you'd like to see how um, how I did these from scratch. There's videos on my channel elsewhere. So if you look for the bookshop layered birds, um, you'll be able to see how I actually put these together. They all come with the instructions on the back um, and you've got all the dies individually and you layer them up. So you can create lots of different types of birds with them. But as I say, I've got one already that I've put together and I'm going to adapt that. So as I say, this little bird is one that I've already put together. I was going to use it on another card. Um, I ended up not using it. So I'm going to change it a little bit so that I can use it on this card instead as a robin. So I've already got browns and creams in there. Uh, I've got my ground espresso. So I'm just going to darken the robin a little bit um, on the top, on the edges just here. This has already got a lovely uh, text effect to it. And it's actually got quite a nice... Um, the body is quite a pale colour, which is ideal for our robin effect. So let's just do the brown. And then I'm going to come back in with that stencil brush. Now I used festive berries last time, so I think I'll stick with festive berries to make sure everything works together. And go in and give this lovely robin a little bit of a red breast. So just with the stencil brush, because you can be more precise with the stencil brush, I'm just going to blend a little patch up here, blend it down into the white, like so. That's enough to make that bird look as if it's now a robin instead. So really cute, really nice, easy way of doing it. And because we're blending it, it kind of helps look a bit like feathers. So that's going to sit in the centre of our card, but I want a tag for that to sit onto. Let's leave that colour out in case I come back to it. Now what we do have is, um, let me see, within the Textures Wildflowers collection, coming back to this collection, which is the most recent launch, we've got this die here. And this just allows you to create a tag from any colour material you like. So that's this. It's very, very simple. You simply die cut this into a piece of cardstock or paper, whatever you want to use, and then you cut your lines down. You can make your tag as long as you want it. You can tear it at the end, put a decorative edge, cut it short, whatever you want. So I'm just going to pop these to the side. I'm going to be coming back to these dies as well, I think. So I'm going to take, um, let's use a little bit of craft cardstock. That'll be a nice color. Um, and just pop this down with a little bit of the low tack tape. Like I say, all the tools I'm using, um, they're all available on Craft Stash, so you can go and find those there, including inks as well, all the blending tools, the stencil brushes I'm using are part of the creative collection. And there we go. So don't forget, if you're watching and you haven't already, do make sure you uh, like, comment and subscribe to be in with a chance of winning a £25 Craft Stash voucher. And you have lots of other chances to win that as well by going through the entire blog hop and um, commenting, subscribing and liking everyone else's videos as well. So I'm just going to, that's reasonably straight, it's probably not perfect, but I'm just going to cut this tag. Now this tag as well, you can cut a little bit shorter if you want to. Let's see, let's make that this length. Just guessing, guesstimating, as I think I said at the beginning, I don't really measure very often. I kind of do things a lot by eye. So there's a tag, we can have our robin, yeah perfect, I didn't want it to take over 
the card too much. I just wanted it to be something to anchor the robin down. Now, again, I'm going to need to have some uh, decoration on this. Uh, first things first, I think let's give it the brown edge that we want. So just very random, a bit of brown around there. Lovely. Now I've got a bit of brown on here, a little bit of red as well, but that's fine. I'm going to put a little espresso on there. Let's do that splodging technique to give this some mottle. That's probably a lot of mottle, so let's dry it off. Kind of disappeared, all our, our inking that I just did has just disappeared, but never mind. We'll do this a couple of times and see. Because it's a craft card stock, we do get it's quite hard to see um, when we've got colour on there because it just absorbs the water straight away. So I've got a little bit of colour variation on there at the moment. Let's dry this bit off. Let's dab and dry as we go and that will give us, by drying off the layers in between, we'll build up the colour and get these lovely watermarks. So I'm going to do this on the background heat gun's really warm so I need to be careful not to hold it too close. Let's do the same dab, oh, dab and dry. And by drying it rather than letting it air dry you get those watermarks, if you know what I mean, the watermarks where you can see everything more clearly, the edge of the colour. I'll show you this in just a second, hold it up to the camera so you can really see. Let's just dry that centre blob off. There we go. There, so I've got all of that inking on there, very random, not too precise with it. Let's go back round again, round the edge here with the uh, ground espresso, just to give that a border. And we'll give it a little bit of texture as well. We could use the numbers. We could use the numbers, couldn't we? Let's go back to that numbers stamp that we had. And just now, without putting this on a block because I want a nice uneven print, I'm just going to press the numbers into here a little. Bit. Do you know, I think that's perfect. I don't want to do any more than that. Lovely. So that will sit under the bird. Now we do need to give it a sprinkling of snow too. So where's a mat? There we go. Now coming back to um, the distress stain. This will work. So just a small... Oh, that was a big blob. There we go. That's what I was wanting. <laughs> I've got a big blob on there, but never mind. We will leave it. Again, I'm going to dry this off. This takes a little bit longer because it's not a water, it's not thin water, it's a thicker ink, so it does take quite a bit longer to dry. Just be wary of what's underneath what you're drying. I don't want to pick it up because I want those blobs to stay as blobs, I don't want them to run down. I actually quite like that big splat now, it's different, isn't it? But dry that off. It, as it dries, it's going to absorb some of the colour that's underneath, some of that brown ink. That's just what the Distress Stain, stain does. It doesn't stay completely opaque. It does take on other colours from around it. Don't forget underneath as well, and that will speed up the drying on top if the underneath is dry. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to completely dry this. Then I think I'm at the stage where I want to take on my um, sewing machine. So I'm going to bring my sewing machine in. I will have to fast forward this bit because the sewing machine is so big you won't see anything. I'm going to stitch with, um, oh, if I can find it, a white stitch, but it may be black, around the edge of this tag. Do some probably straight stitching around there. And then I'm going to do a zigzag stitch. So let's just turn this off for a second. I'm going to do a zigzag stitch attaching this front frame to the background there so those two are one piece okay so I'm going to go ahead and do those and then we'll come back so there I've done a really sort of jagged loose um, it was kind of a, a stitch um, what's the word a zigzag stitch around the edge um, but I did tighten the upper tension or lower the lower tension so that I kind of got this mismatched uh, 
piece is not quite working properly rather than a perfect stitch I didn't want a perfect stitch um, and then I've gone around the edge with a straight stitch of this as well just to give it a border so that's what we're starting to get now so what we need is some foliage for this bird to sit on and I'm actually again I'm talking about taking non-Christmas um, products and using them to make Chris a Christmas card or Christmas project I'm going to again come, come to my wildflowers because we've got some lovely um, wildflower dies here this is a border and there's some nice foliage in here that we can layer up so I just need to find I've got a dark green here I'm just wondering if this is within my scraps box I'm just wondering if I can get enough from here or if I need to find probably need to find a bigger bit so let's find a bigger bit of scrap green cardstock going to just pop this down and die cut this through there we go now take away the excess pop the tape back because I use my tape over and over again and let's pop these flowers out and we're actually going to be cutting into them so don't worry about being too delicate with it it's a very delicate die if you want to keep it intact but I'm not so worried so what I'm going to do now is take these stems and snip away at them all the way along the bottom taking this grass away we don't really want that there we go and then within these I'm going to snip so that we've just got some different foliage pieces so there's one um, there's two probably keep some of these together as well anywhere across around here just to separate them a little bit um, there we go and then I've got that piece that should be enough so that's just enough for our little bird to sit on so what I'm going to do first of all is put the bird down I'm going to put the bird down with foam tape so that's going to lift it up so let me find my I've got my craft slash foam tape we'll come on to the back of the bird die cut as I say I did rescue this from another project uh, I'd previously put this bird together for something and then chose not to use it so it's got a little bit of paper on and glue on the back from that but definitely reuse where you can so I've probably gone overboard with the tape there but it will definitely adhere to the tag we we'll put that down almost at the, we're not quite at the bottom there we go while I'm here let's put a little bit of twine through the top of that tag as well so we don't forget that so just folding a piece of twine a couple of inches long in half put the loop through fingers through the loop pull the ends through there we go now I'm going to leave that long for now I'll cut those off when I'm sort of finishing the card up and I know what length I'd like them um, I think uh, hot glue is going to be the easiest thing for me to use here so let's just start placing this one's quite a full one so just start placing this foliage down with a little bit of hot glue underneath the feet I don't know if you notice I didn't put any glue on the bird's feet so obviously we can only glue to the tag we can't glue any further than that there we go and oops I'm falling apart out the other side as well just slightly depressing the trigger on my glue gun just to get a tiny bit of glue out I need a, a long piece to come out the side of here too I haven't done any inking on these because they're quite a dark green I didn't feel it really necessary so let's fill some of these spaces in now a slightly chunkier piece there lift those little feet up make sure they don't get glued down in the process 
same here chunky a bit just to fill in you don't have to use all of your cuts of course you just add until you're happy with the amount that you've got there um, almost there I think do you know what I think actually that's probably enough I don't want to do too much yeah I think that's enough there so we'll pop those to the side we could come back and use them later maybe so that's going to go on there. My sentiment's nearly always the last thing that I do, um, but I'd like to choose it now, just so that I've got an idea of what it'll be. Now I'm coming to a different collection from the textures range for the sentiment, and that will be here. So this is the Nordic Christmas collection, um, and I've got my sentiments and tags. Now I could have used a tag from here, but these are really quite large tags, and obviously I wanted something a little bit smaller, so I've used that. Now this is, of course, um, Christmassy. Um, we've got Merry Christmas Festive Wishes, all separate as kind of late label, printed label style dies, and then we've also got them as brush lettering. So I like to mix and match these. So I'm going to do uh, probably Christmas in white in the brush lettering, and then Merry can be up there. So let's grab these two, and as I say, I'm going to do them from white. I'm going to cut these both from a white cardstock, so adhere these down. It's quite a solid white cardstock, so probably about, um, probably more than 250 GSM to be fair. It's probably getting towards 300, so nice and solid. But then I'm also going to support them up on some foam tape. Now this is the Craft Stash, well foam sheets. They're adhesive foam sheets and I absolutely love them. I think they're brilliant. So, this just makes it so much easier for placing. So I'm going to take a pair of scissors, uh, sorry, tweezers, and my pokey tool and just remove the word here. So the word Christmas. It's actually quite bold, although it's a, a kind of brush font. It's actually quite a bold font, so easy, really easy to peel the backing off. And this one there. And then with your tweezers is the easiest way. Just start in one corner and start laying the white down over the top. So I'm lining up the first two letters. I'm ignoring the rest. Line up the first two letters. And then in theory, everything else should just nicely fall into place. That's the easiest way to put adhesive letters onto, or the foam onto the letters, die cut letters, because otherwise you just end up with sort of two two pieces that are a little bit flimsy and trying to line them up is really hard. I'm going to sew. I'll glue that down in a minute when I glue everything else. And then the same with the Christmas. Christmas is easier. You don't need to obviously take uh, any letters out. Just peel it away from the foam backing. Try to keep the, the, back, the, the back piece on if you can, the bit of paper, and only release that once you stick it down. But it, sometimes it just comes off. So just trying to lift it all off together. It just means it's not sticking to things while you're placing it and such. There we go. Try not to stretch anything either. The cardstock should prevent you from kind of stretching the uh, foam too much. So at this stage, take out any of the discs, bits between loops that you don't want there, both the foam and the backing. Make sure they've got a little bit in the A there. Don't forget, as long as you're commenting, you'll be in with the chance of winning a £25 craft stash voucher. There we go. So I've then got a uh, Merry Christmas, which is going to be like so. So uh, I think I'm ready to glue some of these pieces down now. Um, let's use, come back to my double sided tape, foam tape for the tag. Starting to get really messy on my desk now, so I start losing things. And I'd love to know, I mean, obviously it's quite late this time of year now to be making any cards, but you may need some last minute inspiration or otherwise you might be thinking about uh, what you're going to do for next year. Of course, um, some people are that prepared, they'll start doing next year's in January. But otherwise I'd love it if you just take inspiration from this card, from some of the techniques and use those instead. Uh, maybe on other cards. Now this, uh, no, I don't think I want to use that. I don't think I want to use foam on there. It's already got foam on it. So let's just use a wet glue because I don't want it to stand so proud that it stands over and above the word Christmas. Really, I want Christmas to be like the highlight 
of the card and the Mary just sort of sits behind the foliage there, so quietly sits behind here. Oh, put it the right way up. There, pull the foliage on top. There we go, that glue will dry. And then we can peel the backing off of this foam. And a bit more. There we go, the backing does tear sometimes, so you do need to do it in stages. There, it seems to be tearing at every other letter at the moment. There we go, it's all off. And place this, I'm not going to place it quite straight. I want to put it at a bit of an angle. Merry Christmas. Like so lovely. Okay now I've just got one more thing that I'd like to do to this and this is again incorporating some elements from other collections. So I've got the bookshop collection which is where the bird came from. Within this we've got paper clip, so metal paper clips um, and then I've also got within this die set I've also got this little number plaque as well. I want to add both of those somewhere on here. Not for any, not to to um, kind of mean anything, the numbers, just because I want to add a little bit of metal. So now I've already got a number cut out that just there, that with this one I actually used on another project. So this can just sit here, I think, just there just quietly sitting there and I'm going to do an extra effect with that in just a moment. We'll just place that on there and then I'm going to take a paper clip. Now I'm not sure if I've actually already got some paper clips cut out um, or I have but just here. I've got some silver ones so I'll use silver again. could use gold but as I've used silver I'll use that again there. Now let's put the, we put the paper clip on there. Yeah, I think we'll put the paper clip on here. It's quite a big paper clip. So just lifting up the foam tape and kind of placing it over as best we can. I think I only want to put it a little bit lower down actually. So lift, lifting it up even further foam tape stays sticky for such a long time I might actually tear off the bottom of the paper clip makes makes it a lot easier to put this on there we go and put that back down now a little blob of hot glue I think under there will secure all of that not too much but just enough to hold that in so we've got that paper clip there Hold that while it cools. I quite like those that twine and the length it is. I might just leave it at that length. Now what I wanted to do with these metal pieces was bring in um, now these are changing brand, but in fact, let's do it with something else for you. Let's see if we can do it with rusty hinge. So as I did earlier, um, putting a little bit of the oxide, actually quite a lot of the oxide for this, onto there, spritzing with some water and then mixing this to make like a thick watercolour paint. And I'm just going to pop this orange in around where the metal is, almost so it looks as if that's kind of rusted. So we'll tuck it underneath, okay, in amongst the gaps there. There we go. And then what I'm going to do is give this a spritz of water and allow that to drip down a little. It's going to drip onto your white letter and that's fine. It just gives it like a bit of a rusted look and you can go ahead and do that with some other colours as well. Let's just do it with the paper clip too, particularly in the background. There we go, and then give it a spritz and allow that to naturally just fall down so it looks as if it's rusted. You can keep layering up the colour if you feel you need some more to make that stand out a bit more. Do so. I think I need a little bit more around here. 
actually um, just moved into a house, or not moved in, just acquired, bought a house, and I pulled, there's a damp wall, and I was pulling the wallpaper off and the clips and things off of that, and one of the clips had rusted onto the wall because the wall was that damp. It was sort of a picture hook, that's what it was called. So um, it just reminded me of this. So I'm just going to heat set that, being careful because this has actually um, got heat embossing on it, this silver plaque. So just being careful not to re-melt that, but just allow that orange to dry there. There we go. I think that's enough. That will complete dry. And lastly, on here, I'm going to, I've got my gathered twigs and I'm just going to brush over some of the white letters just a little bit to take the brightness, the edge off of them. They're still white, they still stand out as Merry Christmas, but just to dull them down slightly. So lastly, this is all going to go onto a card base. Lots and lots of layers there, so many layers. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy with how this has come together. Let's just get some double-sided tape to stick this down. I'm not going to put it down with foam because if I put it down with foam, I'm just adding even more dimension. If I wanted to pop this into an envelope, it really would be too thick. So I'd need to start thinking about making a box for it and then you're into even more work or crafting. We don't mind crafting though, do we? But sometimes you're on a bit of a time scale, especially with Christmas cards. Christmas won't wait. So yeah, I'd love to see, let me know in the comments if you plan on trying any of the techniques or all of the techniques that I've shown you in this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and of course subscribe if you haven't already. And then that will give you the chance to win, or be in the hat to win, uh, a 25 pound craft stash voucher. There we go, place that on. So let's just have move these aside and have a little look at this and all the texture we've got in there. You can see we've still got bits moving around. We've got the berries in the background. We've got the texture through the berries as well. Uh, we've got the tag with all the distressing on. We've got the bird with the distressing on. It's just, it's just layer after layer and there's so much for you to look at. I really like that I've used uh, more of a pinky. It's the festive berries distress oxide rather than a dark red. Uh, to lighten this up and with that light blue in the background it's a lovely mixed media card um lots to look at like i say lots hopefully for you to have learned from in the way of techniques um, and please do go along to the next person in the hall which is helen griffin um, of uh, simply made crafts she is going to be making a festive project with you as well thank you so much for watching um, as I say before, links to everything that I've used are below and I will contact the person who is the £25 voucher as soon as we've chosen. Thank you. Have a lovely Christmas, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.